all of my weapons. <laughs> and this is a piece of mounted linoleum cut. And what I do is I draw an image that is transferred to this linoleum and then I carve it out. What I normally do is like headshots of these women and then I just sort of embellish them with different things like hair or clothing or jewelry that I go out and glean from nature. I want these women to show in some kind of way a connection to nature. Being a printmaker, of course, I had to have my printer. I had to have my little computer. And over here in this little area is my inking place. Images that I sell, that I exhibit. My name is Rosetta Nesby. I was born and raised here in Spaulding, South Carolina. I decided that I needed something new to do with my life. So I decided to go back to school and study visual art. And to this day, I am working as a printmaker. And um, that's where my story begins. It's so good to be able to work out at home because I can stay in here as late as I want at night. I can get up as early as I care to in the morning. Nothing fancy about it. Maybe one day I will be able to afford to branch out, put a building out back. Right now, believe it or not, the magic happens in this little rabbit hole. I learned early in the game as a visual artist, I've got to spread my wings. And I want to spread my wings anyway. I want my art to get in as many galleries in as many states as it can. I had to make art about what I knew. And what I knew was my own life. I'm a black woman. I was a florist. And the women in my life had a strong, unique, historical history with Southern agriculture. So that's it. That's my subject matter, the black female in agriculture. I've always got to bring these elements of nature back to my work. So when I'm sitting here making an image and I'm trying to figure out, okay, now, what am I going to do about the texture in her hair? So a lot of times I'll use moss to make it look like an afro. This little bag, I found it in my uncle's barn. And it literally brought me to tears when I found it because this was an actual bag that my parents picked cotton in. Of course, you know, it looks pretty rough now because I've used it several times. But I came in one morning with the thought of making an image that was that that said something about my culture, but not so literal. So I printed the burlap bag first. And then I took that vascular system from the plant and inked it up in red ink and printed it on top of this and submitted it to a printmaking show called Print Day in May. And that little image won first prize, which bought me, brought me like $500 worth of free art supplies. And I thought, how cool. Whoever saw it got it. So there's your sugar cane, your cotton. This document, I sacrificed. It was a parchment copy that I found somewhere. This is the South Carolina Ordinance of Secession, and it had to be it. That burlap bag that I showed y'all in the back, that's that same burlap bag. When I went to Converse College the first time, it was back in the 80s. And at that time, it was not a tradition for black women to be at Converse College. That was a predominantly white school in a predominantly white neighborhood. And I was pretty much asked in the middle of an art history class to find somewhere else to go to school. And not realizing at the time that I had just as much right to be there as anybody else, I left. It was raining 
pouring down rain, I'll never forget. I didn't even drive. I was riding a city bus to get to school. But I was a single parent with three kids living in the projects, and I was trying to make life better for those kids. Always this yearning inside of me. Go back to Converse. You have just as much right to be there as any other student there. Go back to Converse and make the dean's list as many times as you can. Studying art was the best thing I could have done for myself to reassure me that I belong there. I belong there. Not only do I belong here, my black art belongs here. That was such an experience for me to buckle down and be a student, buckle down and study. Oh, and by the way, I did make the Dean's List a couple of times. <laughs> so um, it was hard, it was difficult. I'm over here and I've got my little tabletop press. And there's actually a little image that I'm working on on that press. I personally think black women are so diverse. And in that diversity, we have so much strength because we carry so much baggage. Those are individual prints or drawings that I made that I just cut out and just merged them all back in together. You'll notice on most of my images, you'll see the, mm -hmm. the scarification of the lines in the face. That's for two reasons. Number one, it, it was passed down from generation from African culture. And number two, for me, it symbolized the struggle that a lot of black women go through. We tend to wear that struggle on our face. Being an artist gives me purpose. I have to keep making it to keep surviving. I mean, I, I wake up every day to go and see what type of image I'm gonna make next. This is like a lifeline for me. I also do it to encourage my great-granddaughter, to encourage her. She's beginning to do art now. This is a piece that my great-granddaughter did last week. And you know, the more I looked at it, the more faces I saw in it, I see it, you see it. She's just doing it without even realizing that she's doing it. And she was so proud of herself. I've been provided the knowledge of how to glean these things from the women in my life, my ancestors. And I have to pass that down to my daughter who has to pass that down to my granddaughter from one generation to the next. Or we as a woman won't survive. Cheek. Here, chick chick. It's the time of the year when they're trying to hatch out eggs. So they come through here, eat up all of my rice and get lost. Yeah. Damn. Where y'all at? Where you at? Where y'all at? I can sit in my backyard and watch those hens all day and learn so much from their personality. And I see so much comparison from those two little hens and how black women carry themselves. Just, 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 just different things in nature reminds me that I have the strength, I have the will to survive because I've been provided that. By God. The most important lesson that I learned from my mother was self-confidence. My mama was a stubborn little old lady. And with that self-confidence, of course, came, had to come so the survival skill. Watching my mother who raised nine kids under some real cruel circumstances. I saw my mother, my aunts, my grandmother, and I'll struggle all through the week in the fields. I'm getting of age, but I can still remember picking cotton myself. These women struggled to provide for their families. But on Sunday morning, you couldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. They were beautiful. They were elegant. They were graceful. Their spiritual beliefs was so much of a part of that strength that they needed to survive. 
My survival kit going into the future will first of all have seeds because we all have to eat. So we have to keep growing things. Second thing in that survival kit will be pictures. Pictures of the women that I came from. Pictures of the little girls that's here now. Oh, one final thing in that survival kit, there has to be a mirror because I have to like what I see when I look in that mirror. And I want these little girls coming behind me to feel the same way. Being able to feel good about myself, feel good about how I look, feel good about being a black woman. I had to empower myself. When I came out of school, I felt like oh, there's nothing stopping me. The only thing that's going to stop me now is me. One day, after I get my name spread across this art world enough, this may do something for my kids or my grandkids. Yeah, I felt empowered. Take those two dimensional images and make a little three dimensional stuff out of it. So, when I finish with this and get it fired, I'm gonna weave some hair, some feathers, or some something out of it.